Welcome to the 9040 EPL Aries demo kit using the tuning and oscilloscope functions. At the end of the session, you should be able to set up the tuner and oscilloscope, define a move profile, select the correct parameters to graph, define your sampling rates, and adjust the PID values to minimize following error. In this session, we're going to look at how to tune the drives without going back to the configuration. Once the configuration wizard's been, wizard's been run, you don't want to go back there to tune your drives. Instead, we're going to use the servo tuner under Tools, which is also going to open up the oscilloscope from the Scope section. First, I'm going to connect to my drive. I'm going to bring this up. You can see that this looks very similar to what we saw when we did the configuration in the wizard. Give us some more room here so we can see our oscilloscope. The proportional gain is voltage over counts of error. The default of 24414 uh, when you first start up a processor is roughly equivalent to 10 volts for 4096 counts of error or 4096 counts. Uh, the integral gain is voltage over seconds over counts. The integral limit sets how much integral gain can be applied. Integral delay is a delay to how long it waits before it starts applying integral gain. The derivative gain you use to damp the proportional gain and its voltage over counts over seconds. Derivative width is how often the derivative uh, is sample or is the sample rate for the derivative. Feed forward velocity and feed forward acceleration uh, are for applying additional uh, voltage early in the move profile to, uh, say, give it a boost. Torque limit, you can limit the amount of available torque to the system. While you're doing your tuning and uh, testing your machine, if you set this to a low limit, if you accidentally run into stops or uh, the motion becomes blocked, you're less likely to damage the machine. Okay, to use the oscilloscope, we're going to uh, set up the uh, scope to use uh, the secondary set point, not the encoder positions. Uh, from our discussions on other sessions, we know that the actual uh, movement is coming from the secondary set point. So we're going to go to an axis parameter and it's going to be a position parameter and it's going to be the secondary set point. Secondary set point is the value that is your commanded motion plus your jog offsets, any um, either gearing, camming, uh, the backlash, all of those things get added up into your secondary set point. So we're going to watch the secondary set point. And we're going to start out watching 2,000 units per division. So let's set it to 2,000 units per division. Channel 2, we're going to map the secondary set point against the actual position. So again, we're going to need an axis parameter. And this time, we're going to look at actual position. Our third channel, we're going to show the following error. So let's go back to our axis parameters. And we're going to find our following error. And we're not going to use channel 4, so we'll leave 4 unchecked here. Now, in order to 
uh, generate our move that we're going to use for our test, we need to go under motion. And there may be some code in here already. If there is, just go ahead and remove that. And we're going to put in the following motion profile. We're going to do a res x to reset our uh, position. We're going to set acceleration to a relatively high value and deceleration. Stop. We need to give it a velocity and uh, then we're going to tell it to do a move. So I'm going to tell it to do an absolute move for my x-axis to position 1. I want it to dwell for a tenth of a second. And I want it to move back to 0. So our move profile is going to use an acceleration, deceleration, and stop value of 1,000, a velocity of 10. It's going to move one revolution uh, forward and then a revolution back. In order for this to run, we need to tell it to download commands to PROG0. PROG0, when we set up our memory initially, we gave it a lot more memory than what was just necessary for its program because when we do this tuning it's going to save those values uh, for our graph into PROG zero's memory space. The next thing we need to do is set up our sampling. So I'm going to go to sampling and PC based sampling would rely on timing from the PC cross communication channel to collect data it's very slow. What we want is onboard sampling and that's going to save that memory internally in PROG Zero's memory space. We're going to say to save it in the servo period and our trigger source is our in motion bit so that's a master flag bit 516 in motion so when the move starts we're going to start collecting data and when the move stops, we're going to quit collecting data. So on the rising edge, we start, and on the falling edge, it'll stop. Say OK. Then for our uh, time scale, let's go ahead and set it up for, uh, say, about 20 milliseconds per division. You can see I've got some old data in my system, so uh, we'll go to 20 milliseconds. Okay. Oops, overshot. Unfortunately, it's got some buffered up here. Let me back up a little. We're going to go back up to 20 milliseconds. Hopefully, I didn't get carried away on the clicker. I did. Okay, 20 milliseconds per division. I'm going to erase any of my current values. All right, we're ready to make a move. So I'm going to tell it to do a single run through of my move profile. And as it uh, sets up the drive and runs, we can see that the trigger, uh, it triggered. It ran, collected data, then stopped. We can see that my values aren't big enough, so uh, we're going to set these values until we can actually see the 5,000 units per division. So we're going 
to have to put this down to a little bigger and get our error to uh, show on the screen here. And we're too narrow, so I'm going to give it some more uh, space here. So that looks like uh, it'll probably all fit. Uh, let me see if I can make it a little bigger here. I'm going to run a single test again. When I run the single test, it's going to go out and do the single revolution. Okay, uh, a little narrow, so we'll go back to 50 milliseconds per division. And let's kick it up a spot. Okay. You can see from the, the profile that I'm using a pure S-curve uh, configuration in my master. So I don't have any sharp instant turns anywhere. I've got that nice smooth S-curve motion profile. Uh, we have 20 units per division. So that would be 20 units of error per division. So you can see I've got five divisions of error approximately uh, during my move profile here. And we can see that as it changes directions I'm getting about the same in both directions. So that's a fairly significant amount of uh, error in this. So I'm going to apply fairly significant amount of change to my proportional gain. I'm going to take my proportional gain and I'm going to about double it and I'm going to double the derivative as well. So I'm going to take this up to 5 and I'm going to take this up to 3 and then I'm going to run my single again and we'll see how our following error works. Remember I was at 5, so uh, it's still around 5. It's started to flatten out. We'll give it another good bump here. Let's bump it up to 0, 0, 007, and I'm going to need to add some more derivative. Uh, let's Let's give it a single run. Okay, it's setting up. It's running. Acquired the data. Oh, much better. You can see now I can uh, decrease the number of uh, units per division of error. So we can see that pretty much cut it in half. Let's see. We still have about um, 20, uh, about 30 or 40 units. For this motor and drive combination, and the amount of inertia the little wheel has, this is a pretty good tune. Uh, we don't need to use the integral. Uh, if we had a motion profile that was had a long dwell at some position and it wasn't reaching that position, we could add integral to help move it into position as it uh, stays out of position longer, it's that time component, it'll help push it into position. Uh, the most important things to remember here are that when you run the oscilloscope, we're looking at the secondary set point, not the commanded position. The commanded position needs to have the offsets for the other things like jog, gearing, camming, etc. Um, we'll watch channel 2 as actual position. Channel 3 is going to be our following error. Our motion profile can be anything that fits in that box. Uh, sampling needs to be um, onboard sampling at the servo period or at a very short interval in the servo period or a short interval. The data that it stores is stored in PROG0. That's why we gave PROG0 so much additional space. And just remember, use this. Don't go back to your configuration wizard and run it there. 
if you run it there, you can download things you don't want to down to memory. So use the tools that we have. And that's it for this session. Thank you. Key points to remember from the tuning and oscilloscope session are to define enough memory for PROG0 to hold the data samples for the tuner. You want to graph your secondary set point, not commanded position, against actual position. The third component of your graph is following error, which is what you're trying to eliminate. And do not go back into the configuration wizard to tune drives as can lead to incorrect data being downloaded to the controller. Thank you, and I hope this session has been of use.